My name is Gary Hutzel. I'm the visual effects supervisor on Bionic Woman. The style that is brought to the show is a very, very rapid cutting. So it gives the, gives the show a particular pace and look. Our task is to match that pace and look. We wanted a look that just blended in seamlessly with the rest of the show. Obviously, there's a tremendous amount of visual effects, much more than you would expect for a television show. Really, a lot of feature level, and particularly the car crash, was, uh, was what you'd expect to see in a feature, not in a television show. The crash was one of the most violent crashes, I think, that I've ever seen staged. We were lucky enough to get involved with that and be able to put some of our work on to smooth the overall feeling of it uh, throughout, throughout the crash. Kudos go out to the, to the folks who staged that and made that work. They ran into it with a Mack truck at full speed, then uh, used a technique where they wrapped the car in a heavy cable. They literally wrapped the cable around the car several times put it on a massive hydraulically pulled lift and yanked it so it would spin through the air like this. And, uh, and then as a, as a coup de grace, it smashes into a phone pole. So uh, it's, it's really quite a spectacular sequence. So I'm thinking Coltrane if it's a boy, Billy if it's a girl. You don't have to do this, you know. Actually, I'm pretty sure you have to name them. I mean, you don't I have know, to. and I'm still asking. So what does that tell you? I'm Melissa, and um, I'm the stunt coordinator and the pilot of Bionic Woman. All right, here we go. Yeah, the biggest challenge is taking Michelle, who's she's done a lot of dance, which is is very helpful for learning all this stuff. But we're throwing her in to be a stunt person, really. Action! Oh, that was the one. That was the one. She's got to fight. She's got to jump. She has to fall. Yeah. I mean, she's got a lot of stuff to do, and it's like we're just throwing her in the deep end right away with very little preparation time. Ah. Yeah. Great. It's kind of bizarre, you're up on the roof and you're like, this is what I do for a job, this is like, this is crazy. Ah. The training, as the weeks have gone by, it's got more and more intense, which is great because it's pushing me and I, I'm quite athletic, so I don't mind that. Left, right, okay. So Michelle's had about a week of, we've just thrown her into rapid uh, fight training. She's doing amazingly. You know, she punches pretty good for a girl. <laughs> good job, punch, up a good hook. Nice hook. I'm not a violent person. At first I was like, I didn't want to get too aggressive. I was like, I was too soft. <laughs> I watched the playback and I was like, oh, I look too soft, too girly. <laughs> I need to make sure that I'm aggressive on every kick and elbow. And go. <laughs> Very good. That's good, hey? Eh? Andy's our second unit director and a very famous fight choreographer. He used to be Jackie Chan's double and fight choreographer. Don't let, don't make this move before you throw the hand. You... Right, throw the hand. Then yeah, and then the body will automatically go there. <clears throat> yeah, so you power, and then you go this two, bam, bam, yeah. The first time I fight, I don't know how to fight. I don't know the capability of my, my body and powers and all those kind of things. Action. Uh, two. Over. Three. My character is initially sort of blocking and, and fighting back um, a little bit. You're gonna have to do a little better than that. And then I suddenly get my confidence as Jamie and, and fight back. Action, go to it. She's good. She's good. The new biotic woman. How am I doing now? 
anytime you approach a remake, you have to view the title as baggage for good or ill. The baggage that's going to get the audience to try you out because they remember that old show, but also the baggage that's going to set a certain tone or a certain set of expectations that you may not want to fulfill because you want to upend those expectations. So similar to Battlestar Galactica, when I looked at the title Bionic Woman, I thought, well, what could you do after you've gotten everyone excited and gotten everyone kind of in the door because they're expecting to see something uh, unique and original with this title, what can you do to shock them? What can you do that they're not expecting? Jamie. What happened? Why can't I feel my legs? Both your legs and your arm had to be replaced. They're making you better. <laughs> This is a story about uh, a real person in our culture, in our society, to whom the most extravagant, unexpected, unbelievable thing occurs. And so we're looking at telling a story uh, that really should feel like it could take place right outside our window. Mommy, there's a lady out there running really fast, like as fast as a car. Sweetie, what did I tell you about making things up? I just thought it was cool that a girl could do that. That's all. The Bionic Woman is, of course, a title role. Uh, if you don't have a great Bionic Woman, you don't have a show. So this was the most exhaustive search I've ever been involved in in my life. I mean, it, just, it was just this avalanche of candidates. And because what you're looking for is someone who simultaneously can convey an all-American accessibility, someone who feels like uh, the girl next door, and someone who, when she throws a punch, you actually believe it. There's an old saying, God doesn't give with both hands, and that's very true. You either get one or the other. It's really, really hard to find both. And in Michelle Ryan, we really feel like we've got the whole package with her. I know what I'm capable of now. So you send whoever you send, and I'll bury one guy after the next. Jamie Summers is complex. Um, on the surface, she appears to be, you know, almost perfect and very smart, very loyal, very warm, but she has those depths and those darker sides to her personality. Boo. But she's not someone who's going to blame other people for her situation. She's gonna take charge and she's gonna be in control and she's gonna own her life. If we do this, we do it on my terms. Bionic changes her from a normal young woman to someone who has the capability to kill. that if that happened to you in real life you'd feel like you'd feel like a bit of a freak you would I think she feels like that at first she's like this isn't who I am I'm I'm not someone who throws men across the room and breaks their arm you know I'm feminine I'm so I think there's all those issues as well tell me what you put in my head Jamie I almost killed a man I didn't even know what I was doing what did you put in my head I just I think it's such an amazing opportunity I mean for a young British actress to get this role is like incredible so I'm just so open and excited about it ah! Great. I've been working with a dialect coach and an acting coach, having Krav Maga lessons, which is Israeli martial arts. So, yeah, there's a, as an actor, I mean, it's just brilliant because you get to do things that you would never normally do. You're gonna have to do a little better than that. Uh. I do like a challenge, so <laughs> thankfully, because there's a lot to do on this. How am I doing now? When I first heard about this project, they said they're redoing the Bionic Woman. I said, uh, no. And action. It's no, 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 not so fast. Just take a look at the script. It's not what you think it is. And I read the script and I said, I, I, I want to be a part of this. Should I intervene? No. This operation, this patient doesn't officially exist. We can always terminate later and need be. Jonas is a fascinating character. He's not a clear-cut bad guy where, you know, I, there's nothing more boring to me than watching somebody sit there and twist their mustache. But he's a very complex guy. He's a true believer. He's a real patriot. He's really a guy who believes in what he's doing. And I think that if rules need to be bent and people need to die and people need to suffer along the way for the greater good, so be it. How long until she's combat ready? She's a civilian. This is not your mom's bionic woman. This is very, very, very different than what you think it is. Everyone has to sing for their supper around here, Will, or haven't you figured that out yet? It's not the bionic woman that I thought it was gonna be. 
or that I think people will think of when, when they hear it. It's, it's very different. I, I think it's going to surprise some folks. Who are you? I negative you have fifty million dollars worth of my property inside you, so I guess you could say I'm your landlord. What do you want from me? Sooner or later, you're going to have to make a choice. It goes something like this: heads you lose, tails you die. Welcome to the game. I play Sarah Corvus, who is the first bionic woman. Ta-da. She's kind of lost her mind. The bionics have gotten to her, and she's definitely a little, um, a little screwed up. So what did they replace? Me, they did both arms, both legs. Only one eye. So I did the other one myself. I'm cutting away all the parts of me that are weak. I was drawn to this character from the very beginning. She's so much fun to play the evil person. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. <laughs> I wanted to play Starbuck because I got to shoot a gun, and I wanted to play Sarah because she's nuts. <laughs> it's like, you have one thing that draws you to a character. <laughs> that was it. That was definitely it. Time out. I think any time you play a villain, you have to find a redeeming quality for yourself. And from my experience, you have to find a vulnerability in them or, or it makes them inhuman. I find that you have to always think you're right as a character, even if you're doing the worst thing imaginable. And that's what it is with Sarah Corvus, is that I understand her pain and I understand why she does what she does. It's because she's good at it and she wants to be loved. Tell me you love me. She's very complex. She's got many, many layers to her, and I don't think you'll ever really know what is going on in her head. I don't think anyone knows. I don't even think she knows, because she's, she's definitely lost the plot. <laughs> what do you want from me? Honestly, I'm not sure. Jogging partner? My name is Gary Hutzel. I'm the visual effects supervisor on Bionic Woman. First thing we did is we did quite a bit of research into what modern bionics look like. And we were surprised at how far along today's prosthetic bionics are actually functional. They've uh, developed uh, arms that can actually respond to your thoughts. You can control an arm, actually reach out and touch things. Now, of course, our hand is meant for crushing and, you know, and throwing iron bars through the air at, at supersonic speeds. When we constructed our arm, instead of using cables, pulleys, and uh, sink motors, we used what we would call a future technology that would, that would use muscle bands that it could track. So we designed our arm around that concept, but still kept, uh, for instance, her palm has armor padding on it. Her fingers have, have uh, stainless steel rings around them to protect them so that you can grab and crush things. So we actually thought through that level and we've implemented all those items in, into the hand. Will there be bionic limbs in the future? Absolutely. There's no question about it. It's being developed right now. Will a human being be able to run at 60 miles an hour through the forest? No. <laughs> Mommy! Really fast, like as fast as the car. But bionic limbs, absolutely. 